beast right here. On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing. Oh my God, look at the size of this guy. This is knockdown, drag him out, nighttime Kubera snapper fishing. Oh, 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 I got him, he's still here. This is not for the faint of heart. If you're into dropping down live lobsters for fish that can range anywhere from 40 to well over 60 pounds, stay tuned. This could be one incredible episode. That's a real one, George. <laughs> George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, where big fish don't stand a chance. I'm a native South Floridian, and growing up fishing in the Miami area, there was one tradition that would always start to materialize around that full moon in July and peak around the August full moon. And that's nighttime fishing for Kubera snapper off wrecks and assorted debris fields in the northern Key Largo, Florida Keys region. I mean, it's uh, it's something that's it's had a following for a lot of years. Uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, I'm not sure if it's just the the massive size of them that's the attraction. And uh, I got back to the Kubera snapper fishing about three years ago with Captain Kevin Jeffries. We had gone out and had an incredible night catching big Kubera snapper off Key Largo. So Kevin and I always stayed in touch, and I said, you know what we need to do? Let's get back on this Kubera snapper deal and go out and have a great time with it. We could not have picked a better weather window. The seas were absolutely flat. Uh, no late afternoon August thunderstorms. They were just far away from that area. Just absolutely picture perfect tourism style weather. Here we go, we were all set. We had live lobsters for bait, the heavy tackle, and an added twist to this particular Kubera snapper trip was that we were gonna be aboard my brand new Mark VI. The new Mark VI, it's a Mako 334 center console. It's the Sportfish Edition, powered by triple 350 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards. And this would prove to be the very first fishing trip. The boat is running like a champ. And um, I, I just had the excitement, I was probably overwhelming with excitement. And uh, I know Kevin was excited too because we had the weather and uh, the bite was pretty decent leading up to it and hopefully we would get another good evening of uh, activity out there. Once we started to slow, I looked at the Simrad and sure enough, here comes uh, part of the wreck. We shut down to see what kind of drift we had, uh, the direction of the drift and the bulk of the time we're gonna have a little north current there so we'll probably set up on the south side of it. And, uh, and just let the boat do a quick drift, just to try and get an idea of what our drift is gonna look like. On my map, we had pretty much the main part of the wreck, as well as six or seven other pieces of assorted debris that these fish would hold around. The key thing, obviously, is watching your um, sonar for the wrecks and the fish. Tell me what you're gaining. I'm not happy. So we actually had a couple of bites there before dark. They're they're pretty close to the wreck, and, that, and that's pretty common with, with fishing them. Uh, if if uh, the current gets really strong or really light, they seem to hunker down to that wreck a little more. Come on! I'm at a beast right here. But nonetheless, it's uh, it's nice to get those bites before dark. It doesn't always happen, but we had a couple of bites. How you doing, Kevin? Um, I'm trying to. I was trying to stay, monster. I was trying to stay down there and get a double up, but I'm. I'm gonna come up now and give you a hand. Lost him. He's off? Oh. And the second one was a big fish, and uh, and I, I uh, put as much heat on him as I could. I had the rod bent over, and well, I don't think he got in the wreck. I just had so much heat on him, we finally pulled the hooks on him. I, I you know, I had to drag on Max, and I was humming the spool trying to trying to stop him because I knew it was, you know, it was either stop him or pop him, and um, in this case, we popped him. Never got his head turned, really. George Pulveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Pen, let the battle begin. Mako, the perfect predator. Bass Pro Shops at Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. We'll be right back. I'm slugging it out with a Kubera snapper that's trying desperately to break me off in a northern Key Largo, Florida Keys wreck. 
I'm fishing with Kevin Jeffries and using live lobsters for bait. All the way down for that sinker, huh? Yeah, it's another 100 feet to go, George. That's it. Made him mad. Figured out he was hooked, George. I know. I'm thinking. This type of fishing isn't for the faint of heart. The goal is stop the Kubera snapper and get it coming your way or be stopped. Here's the sinker. I got color. That's him. It took a little while. There's there quite a ways down there, but I popped a you know a real nice fish, a little above average fish for the spot, a you know a little over 40 pounder. Monster from the deep, coming up. Woo! That set of a gun. It's a real one, George. You tell me it's a real one. Come on. <laughs> oh. And the first fish on the new Mark VI turned out to be a 41 pound Kubera snapper. And uh, that was quite fitting for the trip and quite fitting for the boat. And I was certainly happy because now our luck was changing. Oh my God, look at it. I worked too hard for that. You know, this is not, <laughs> as you know, this is an intense all out flat. It's like probably a boxing match. You got one round, you yeah. got everything you've got out. It's not like you pace yourself and all that. And check those freaking dog teeth on these things. Yeah, look at teeth on that guy. Look at that. And, and it's just a couple more shakes, this would have been loose, you know? Unreal, Kevin. Woo! I hope you get the next one. That's a monster, George. And you're sitting Thanks there. Thanks for bailing us out. We lost a couple of those. Nice to get one in the boat. It's just the mentality behind it. You're, you're knowing you got structure nearby, hoping you find a way from it. You hook, and yet you got to give it everything you got to keep it out of any structure. And as it's starting to get midway up, and you're turning it and coming your way, you get a little relieved. But then again, you don't realize how far 200 feet is. I'm looking for that sinker, so I'm ready for this thing to end. You know, for, for someone looking in from the outside who's not familiar with, with this type of fishing, a lot of them probably go, what? You're, you're gonna take a perfectly good lobster and put it down for bait? And, uh, and a lot of them are just like, you yeah, know, stop. I'll just, I'll just keep the bait. I don't, you know, let's not waste those. Really, I guess in theory, if you looked at it like this, trade a pound or a pound and a half lobster for a 20 to, 70 pound snapper, it seems like a good trade pound for pound. Are you down here, Kevin? Yeah, I think we might be together. Are you a wreck? No, I don't think so. I think you're good. The fight of the Kubera snapper, if you've not done this, it's uh, hard to put in perspective. Yeah. It's maybe you, you, you take a heavy outfit, 100 pound test braid, a stand up style outfit, hook it up to the back of a, uh, of a pickup truck and have your buddy in that pickup truck just step on that gas and, and drive it for about 50, 60 feet and just see if you can hang on or what's gonna happen. That's pretty much what the initial strike of a Kubera snapper feels like. Man, he's smoking hard. Oh man, I gotta get him up, I had him coming for a good, good bit there. He made that one run. Yeah. Got over there. And initially, I didn't think it was a big fish and I'm pumping and I'm unwinding and I'm gaining. And I said, this is it's heavy, but it's coming rather easily. The way's down there yet. And I could tell this was a little bigger fish. Uh, I was a little concerned watching George. I was like, oh, is he gonna get him stopped? And, and uh, fortunately, George got him stopped and uh, started gaining. It was, uh, it was pretty heated at the start of that battle uh, to see who was gonna win that one. These guys just got one. Did they? Yeah, scooting and hollering. Hey guys, act like you caught one before. <laughs> Here come, buddy. You're looking down there. Here yeah. comes color, and you see a lot of pink coming up. It was a brute of a fish that uh, we boated. It ended up weighing in at 54 pounds. He's coming all on his own. Oh, that's a good one, George. It's not exactly where I want to have him gaffed. I'm backing off of the sinker. All right. Let's lay that down. Around. I got coming him. back he's, here with the rod. He's coming in the boat. We took our legal two fish per boat and uh, just enough that uh, we had uh, a lot of fresh fish for the production team, and so now, from that point on, the rest of the trip, it was catch and release mode. That was 40 for sure, 40 oh plus. Oh my God, check this thing. Look at, and you're a big man too. We get here. Boy, you got him, be careful. Uh-huh. Uh, we just officially hit our limit, George. That's good. That's our <laughs> limit right there. Two over 30 inches, we're allowed 20 of them. 20 only of them. Two, yeah, only two over 30 inches. That's well, all they're, you all need. Over, they're all over 30 inches. That's all you need. Well, plenty of Kuberas for the, for the whole crew. 
and everything. That's wow, Kevin. Nice work, George. That was unbelievable, man. <laughs> George Pavarobo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Simred and the new NSS Evo 3 display. Go with Simred and go with confidence. Wrap on a coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. We'll be right back. John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park, an institution, worldwide institution, located in Key Largo in the upper Florida Keys. As a fact, John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park encompasses approximately 70 nautical square miles. It's the first undersea park in the United States. So think about that, 70 square nautical miles. That's a lot of salty real estate. Uh, an incredible place. I've been here several times and I remember, again, as, as a youth coming here, and getting on the glass bottom boat, there's something special about riding that boat and looking down and just seeing the corals and the fish that you could see on it is remarkable. And for the more experienced, they have scuba diving uh, for some of the deeper dives out around here. Kayaking, very, very big. It's a major eco area. There's so many facets of John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park that uh, you could spend a lot of time here and I suggest that you do so. You will not be disappointed. How you doing there? I'm on, Kevin. This is your specialty. Get my gloves on and assist you here. Because I have all the confidence in the world. Finally, uh, finally, I got a chance. And uh, George said, uh, as George said, I could catch one. So, so I got fortunate, got hooked up. And, uh, and again, I knew as soon as the fish hooked up, it was, it was another big fish. Yeah, you do a lot of things out here, but this is one of your specialties, which you're known for in guiding. Yeah, not for the faint of heart. No. So I save your big words for later. <laughs> As Kevin had the hot hand early on, and then I got the hot hand, I said, I'm happy. But I was, was hoping that Kevin would get in on the action so I could sit and watch him, because these Kubera snapper are hard work. Somehow my wish came true. I looked over at Kevin's rumbling up there, Rod's bet, and he's doing everything he can do to stop his Kubera. You're a big hockey guy. So you, so you stay in shape, huh? Yeah, I try. Not feeling it right now. Yeah. And I'll tell you what the bear is, is, I don't know what's more fun, watching somebody fight him or actually fight him, huh? I was pinned to the gunnel. He had me pinned down. I was uh, thumbing the drag a little, trying to slow him down as well. Got him stopped, gained a little bit. 188 feet of water. It's not like we're 1,400 and you're getting a sword up the bottom here. Although it feels like it, doesn't it? <laughs> it does feel like it. Got to be seeing that sinker soon there. I might think I... I could have got a glimpse of the uh, sinker way down under those shadow caster lights. Let's hope. I, I think it is, too. You all right? Yeah. I'm out of gas, so. All right, well, you come on. You, got, you could run on fumes. You're that close. You could run on fumes. Put it neutral and let it coast. Yeah. <laughs> and I just hear him huffing and puffing over there. And, and Kevin's a big guy. He plays hockey. Uh, he's fit. And to see him coming to the end stages, getting ready to run out of gas, that sort of gives you an idea how these could be able to snap or fight. Yeah, sinker, 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 up, sinker up. Okay, Give me a sinker, give me a sinker. All right, hold it, put a sinker in the holder. Yep. Oh my God, look at the size of this guy. All right, we're gonna release well, this one, one here. This is a moose. That is a real one. Half. You know, the stars aligned, I hate to say it like that, but that's that's kind of how it works with that kind of fishing and that structure. And uh, this, that was, again, another well above average fish for the for the spot. All right, here's one hook out. They keep getting bigger, guys. I'm telling you, this is crazy. Another had to be 55, 60 pound fish. I hand lined this fish in and I'm just in awe of the size of this thing alongside the Mark VI. Put, right, put that lead hook right there. Uh, we got a nice clean release on him. He was able to uh, get uh, returned to that breeding stock and, and hopefully keep this fishery uh, around and, and alive for the next uh, 20 or 30 years. I, you had me worried. <laughs> You're sitting there <laughs> I was running worried. out of gas. I was running out of gas, George. <laughs> that one got me. That was another good fish. A good one on that one. Send him back down and. Um, yeah, nice you know. to release him back into the breeding stock. Absolutely. Yep. So. All right, well, I'm telling you, they're, they're chewing, so yeah, we'll the bite is on. on and go torture ourselves some more. Yeah, see if you can wind one more up, George. I think I'm good. Me, I think you need, you need a little more tune-up going, going here, I think, you know? George's Tackle Locker brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch-and-release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. 
Fishing lights are critically important on boats. On my new Mark VI, for example, I have the Shadowcaster Marine LEDs. I have a total of six lights. What's unique about the Shadowcasters is how they incorporate into your actual sonars. For example, I have my Simrad machines. I pop up the Shadowcaster icon, and there you have it. And you could toggle and change the color of the water around the transom side of your boat based on the particular color that you like. On the Kubera Snapper trip that we're on, for example, I left it on blue the entire time. We had all kinds of baits coming in, ranging from ballyhoo to houndfish to actual bait balls that held around the boat. Also, interior lighting too with shadow casters. They have under gunnel lighting so that you could set the brightness levels. You could set up very bright or you can dim them down to where your visibility around you at night is excellent, but yet you could still see what's going on the boat. You could do your tackle rigging whatsoever. And again, you could change the different colors from blue to white to red to green. Just a functional setup all the way around, very easy to operate. So if you're into fishing and you do bait fishing or you want to track game fish to your boat, check out Shadowcaster Marine LEDs. Mercury Performance Stats, Key Largo, Florida Keys, Cubera Snapper. Power, Triple Mercury Verado 350 horsepower outboards. Total miles traveled, 40. Consistent cruise, 4,500 RPM. Speed, 47 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 36 gallons. George Pofaromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Starbright, professional grade boat care products. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum, never a spectator. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Ocean Point Suites in Key Largo, a very comfortable facility to take a vacation, or in my case, when we come down here fishing the Upper Keys, it's a super place. Plenty of boat storage on the trailer, continue on through the property. They have a launching ramp here that if you have a boat that's around 24 feet or less, you could launch, tie up at their place. The cool thing about that is right outside the marina, wide open Atlantic Ocean. Tennis courts, swimming pool. They have a little restaurant and bar upstairs of the check-in center. Uh, just a very fishing, boating friendly facility to work out of. Next time you're in the upper Florida Keys, the Key Largo area in particular, Ocean Point Suites, I can tell you I've stayed here enough. It's a friendly place, a great place, and you're gonna enjoy it. So the closing fish uh, was sort of uh, bizarre. Here we go. I got Slam, typical Kubera snapper, running offline, got a turn, took off again, and just started smoking. And the longer that run goes, you know it's gonna probably get you in a wreck. I'm in the bottom. He got me here. Kevin is in the bow of the boat, and he hooks up. We got a double header going on right now. Come on, it's up to you, Kevin. Come on, quit, you son of a... Uh, this guy had me, and I couldn't slow him down. He got me in the bottom. So it doesn't happen very often, but that's what I start to think about when you, you get to the point where you're thinking, okay, we're gonna get this fish. I start to think about, man, I'm out of gas. My arms are like jello. I'm panting. How can we lose this fish? Let's hope, let's hope that doesn't happen. Just pulling that lobster and that lead and then that fish through that current and through that water, even if he's not fighting, it's, it's a heavy lift. Oh. <sighs> Kevin pulls the hooks in his fish. We had plenty of bites right on that wreck or right beside that wreck and just, just no chance. You, you can't stop those fish, they're, they're too strong. Man, I got them stopped a couple of times, started gaining on them. You know, that's the problem when you get them near the wrecks. When they're there, it's tough. And um, I just kept pressure on and, and kept at it. And I felt something move. Oh, oh, oh I got him, he's still here. He came out. Yeah, the fish had somehow wasn't in there well. It had come out to try to make another run. And as soon as I felt that, I said, we came free. You know, we've got this one. And, and you're in the mindset right now of just trying to stay tight to keep the hook from dropping. Got color now. Here comes the sinker. Ooh. I got the sinker for you. Yep. You got him? Yep. Whew. Oh, good one. There it is. 
The final closing fish of our trip got it up through the water column. We had about, I don't know, maybe a 20 pound class, Kubera snapper, and there it was. We took the sequelizer, hitched it up, unhooked the fish, sent it all the way down, sequelizer released, let that fish go at about 100 feet beneath the boat. That's enough it goes to release. Yeah, that's what Sequelize it down, pay it out, look at him swimming down there. Been, uh, obviously, we've had this plan for a while, and I knew George was coming down. It's, uh, you know, I've been on the show a few times, and we've had you know, unbelievable luck. Wow, it, uh, it worked again. We, uh, we got, I hate to say lucky, but at the end of the day, if, uh, I think I say, I think if you fish, you can, you can use that word. We, uh, we, we were very fortunate, and uh, the stars aligned early in the trip and took the pressure off, and, uh, and that, makes, that makes the entire trip a lot easier. Kevin Jeffries has been at the guiding business a fair amount of time. I think he's been fishing the Key Largo area for around 20 years, but yet I, I call him one of the new generation guides. Uh, we had a lot of good times together and had a lot of good shows. And when it comes to bear snapper fishing, he's one of the masters that could put you on the fish in the upper Key Largo area. Follow George on social media. Visit georgepoveromo.com. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. On Instagram, at georgepoveromo. And watch his episodes on YouTube at George Poveromo TV.